What is going on, people? Welcome to Throwdown, episode 236. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. Kept you waiting, huh? Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. Brian Monjoma. Man, that Game of Thrones. <laughs> Brett Murdoch. Hi, oh, everybody. Adam Vale. Ghostbusters. And joining us once again, Mr. Chris Seeley. Hey, what's up, everyone? Yo, man, you got them charts, son? <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'm enjoying the Florida sun. Yeah, how you been, man? Tell the people where, where you've been at and all that. Oh, we just, um, we did the the parks, you know. We went to Islands of Adventure and Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. I got to... I had to ride coasters I, I didn't get to ride before, like the Aerosmith, the rock and roller coaster. That actually mm-hmm. was a fun ride, man. Oh, shit. It's a long queue. It's like it was like two hours we were waiting to ride. Yeah. That shit, oh damn. Yo, man, you didn't do the fast pass deal? No, the fast passes were taken. If you don't get them like a day mm-hmm. or more in advance, you don't, uh, you don't get them. Well, you should have went in with a limp and got the wheelchair. <laughs> and then put you in the wheelchair and then you skip the lines. That was the other thing we used to do. Oh. You yeah, should see can. how many people are on mobility scooters, man. They're just like right around. It's yeah. The most aggravating shit ever. It's like, oh, yo, we don't need them shits, the man. <laughs> see, that's what it is. There, you see all those people with the mobility scooters. They were the ones that were um, trying that shit at them. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, that's how they milk it. And then all they have to do is say, you know, you got a heart condition or something. They're not gonna fucking question you. They're like, all right, here you go. <laughs> you pay a little extra to get the scooter, but it's cheaper than the fast pass. So. Nice. All right, um, Chris, you came back on a good show because uh, we got a lot of shit to cover, man. So we're just going to get into it, man. Busy week. And we're going to start off with the biggest uh, thing that happened in gaming this week, people. Death Stranding got a new trailer and... And a release date. Release date. Brah! Remember, we, the, the joke was like, that shit's coming for PS5, PS5 launch game. Nope. Coming this oh. year, people. November 8th, I believe. November 8th. Yeah. Man, it's coming. Um, Manny, I'm going straight to you, man. What, what, are your, what, yeah, what happened, Adam? That's a busy window. It is. It's, it's going to be it's very. Gonna there's another game that comes out that we're going to talk about in that window yeah. as well. You know, um, so many um impressions of what you th- you know you know the trailer and all the uh, collectors editions, everything. You know, it, it's funny. It's, they just dropped everything all at the same time, as opposed to doing one of those things where they show you a trailer and then they then they then they uh, then you don't know anything. But now this one was like everything that every this was. Everything. By the way, before you go on, man, I should say this was typical Kojima. It was announced and then announced. Yeah, it was announced. <laughs> what was it announced on Monday? And then, uh, and then it was, uh, then it, you know, he was like, yeah, it's going to be on the 29th. Yeah. By the way, I'm so eager to talk about this. I, c- I completely skipped that part. Okay. So basically, they announced, like, hey, we're going to have Death Stranding tomorrow, right? So mm-hmm. they have this page over on Twitch, right? Literally, it's just fucking hands. It's just hands. <laughs> 10,000 10, people were watching it for watch 24 it hours. Hands. <laughs> yeah, Just and watching the, hands. the kicker was that essentially the whole trailer was running, or most of the trailer was running mm-hmm. behind the hands, and as time went on, more of the trailer got revealed from underneath the hands. Yeah, that is crazy. And but, he did yeah. he did it like earlier in the week. Like It was like two or three days, and then the hand showed up the day before, and then after that, then the trailer uh, dropped. So yeah, I mean it, it's a really, it, it's pretty much all the stuff that you we want we everybody wanted to see at that E3 trail uh the, the at that last year's E3 right it was yeah, like pretty much you know it wasn't this it wasn't this melancholy sort of like I'm just talking to you sort of thing it was like balls to the wall they even got what was that the the band um Apocalyptica uh, Apocalyptica to do the you know well they used an Apocalyptica song over it <laughs> and just be like action. So, you know, they have them riding on a bike. They show off the bike stuff. They show a lot of the little bit of the menu system. You can actually pee. Which yes, is, you can pee well, on a command. Finally. Yeah, finally. Yeah, yeah, pee, typical a, Kojima. Yeah. So, yeah, goofy stuff like that. I'm sure you also have to have water and stuff like that. There's, so, I guess there's some, so from what they say, there's probably a little bit of a survival aspect to it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Hopefully there won't be too much. You know how I feel about that. Well, shit. you know, they're like, all doing it. They're all doing it. They well, I mean, realism, you know. Well, here's the thing: like Metal Gear Solid Three had a survival aspect to it, but it wasn't really that extensive. Yeah, like I eating. Think it's gonna yeah. Be, yeah, you just had to eat to keep your stamina. So I'm, I'm guessing a snake eater. You had to eat. 
Yeah, that's the same yeah, one. The snake, yeah, that's that's the so, one you're so, talking about. Yeah, you had to you had to eat and you had to do. I don't think it's going to be very extensive. I like I don't think you need, you're going to be have to scrounge for fucking water all. Over yeah, the place. you got a hang nail. You got to fix that shit. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Well, I mean, I I think maybe there might be a, might be that sort of thing where you get injured get and you have to fix that stuff. Maybe that. But I don't think it'll be too too extensive. You know. Yeah. Oh, they also um, told us about the story. Obviously, we don't know all the details. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll get into that. But, you know, basically, it's a post I guess post-apocalyptic game. Like, something happened in America. America's all fucked up. And it's your mission to, you know, like, unite all the settlements and stuff. You know, a connection's the part president. of the theme. You help the president. Even the president's like, you know, was it like, she's like, yeah, you know, I'm still the president. We're still America. And Norman Reed is like, man, this ain't America. Fuck this There's shit. nothing left. He was like, you know, you're, not shit. you're the president of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we got to see that, you know, the, you know, scrounging around looking for for items. Your backpack mm-hmm. seems to be a vi- big thing. Gameplay yeah. wise. Did you see in the open road? He came across that guy from Days Gone. He passed him by on a motorcycle. <laughs> he was like, hey, yo, what up? <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? He's yeah. going in the other direction. It's like, it's like here we here. I'm the here here. Days gone, guy. You're the fake version of me. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm the oh, real yeah. me. Go ahead. I'm Brett. the real. Yeah. I'm the real Norman Reedus. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Like, you know, they showed up the main new system. They showed up the, the different little survival aspects. They showed, you know, him beating the shit out of some some random soldiers. They also showed uh, <laughs> the, you know, obviously it has stealth aspects, and it just it's for some if definitely felt like a metal gear game yes like you know like the guys are punching him and then all of a sudden items are falling out of his body yeah. like in the game you know <laughs> do you think they were, they were stealthy or do you think they were aliens nah they're people they're people well they're the people. stealth aspect has to do with the whole um the other things that are creeping in the ground yeah there's also that too so not only you have to avoid like i guess i want to call it rival corporations or whatever they call them you know, the fireflies. Yeah, you have the yeah the fireflies. <laughs> fireflies. You have rival rival groups. You know, essentially the ones that probably I'm, I'm sure um, Troy Baker wor- uh, works for the guy with the skull with the with the gold skull mask. So my guess is that yeah, so you you're probably going through them and you're stealing weapons from them. I'm sure it's a bit. It seems it's from the way things are sounding. It sounds like things are gonna are very much like. Metal Gear Five, where you can probably hijack one of those cars and take a car back to your little. Because I don't think he's just kind of camping outside in this one. I think it's like you have like a base that you kind of bring shit back to or bring things to and from. Or. Well, remember a while ago when we saw that first trailer where we mm-hmm. all goofed and thought it was a walking sim? It shows yeah. Norman Reedus carrying all kinds of shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So. Like- <laughs> Yeah, so I'm assuming he's carrying stuff to a destination, maybe building up a base or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's like he's, he's, he's rebuilding America one step at a time. So, yeah. 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 One step at a time, build that table. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, also in the game, it kind of demonstrates a little bit of the customizable nature of him and the bike. Because if you notice, he, he's wearing like 10 different outfits in the whole thing. Like he's got one blue outfit, he's got a new backpack. That crazy bike. There's two versions of that. Like there's that silver version in the beginning, and then there's like a blue version that matches them later on. Do you, so, do, you think, huh? do you think he finds that, or you think those are microtransactions? We have to buy outfits. I don't think. I don't. I mean, here's the thing. Like, I don't think Kojima in this section is not being, you know, told to do those sorts of things. Like you know, where in Metal Gear Five, where they 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 gave you a mother base stuff, but you can only have one additional mother base, and you had to buy the rest with microtransactions or buy these mother base coins and things. So I don't think there's going to be. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's going to be any sort of overt microtransactions like that that adjust gameplay. But I do think that there might be. You know, I do think there might be something. Cause like maybe a D like a DLC one, but I don't think there's going to be any sort of like, hey, buy this and you get all the clothes. Yeah. By the I way, Manny, I, w- I want to get your impression on this because I felt like when I saw the trailer, like you know, like we, you and I had a little bit of insider information because all the shit that we saw that Tribeca thing was a final reveal to everybody, you know? Mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of cool about how, like, the world's interconnected, how, like, the internet yeah. plays a big part in it, and it's yeah. also, the, you know, the themes about how, like, technology, even though it's not new, like, technology is alienating us from, you know, humanity and all that, and how do mm-hmm. we, you know, break that and get back to what what, what matters? I'm like, oh, that's pr- pretty mm-hmm. interesting, you know? So yeah. that's cool. And then to me, what I love was it 
like the best I can describe it is it smelled like a Kojima game. Like it mm-hmm. just reeked of it in a good way. Like all oh, that goodness, man, that special flavor was there, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it's funny because, you know, you saw the bike. I'm like, that looks like something from Horizon Zero Dawn, which kind of makes sense. You know, it's the Decima engine, you know? Um, so, what, so, does she have a bike in that game? Do no, 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 no. Like, like the, the bike looks like the technology from Horizon Zero Dawn. Understand? I mean, it, it, to be honest, it just looks like Shinkawa designed. Like yeah. they, all the vehicles in that stuff, kind of fit that. No, but I, I, I like I know that. Like I know Shinkawa designed it, but to me, it just gave me that Horizon feel. And I'm guessing it's because of the engine, you know? Um, Maybe. But yeah. I mean, from the glows and things. That's that what I'm saying. That, not the, oh, not okay. the design, the glows, like that that shine on it. You know, it looked mm-hmm. like it. Um, pff, yeah, I'm uh, like, if you guys remember last time I talked about this game, I was getting annoyed because we weren't getting anything. It was just mm-hmm. these weird abstract trails. I'm like, all right, guys, come on, Kojima. I'm your boy, but come on, man. This is bullshit right now. This, I'm like, okay, I'm fucking done. I'm, I'm, I'm there. This is, You're this like, is cool. I've already ordered it. Or, uh, like, <laughs> or waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> but by the way, Manny, tell us about the, the special edition. What comes with it? Because it's pretty oh, insane. Okay. So the special edition. It comes with a case that has a life-size version of that baby tube. <laughs> yeah, is the baby that? tube? Yes. That baby, that baby tube that's in the thing that they've. Been, yeah, you get that, and it's got a light. It's got a, a light and stuff like in it. It's a, apparently it's like a lamp. Does it have a baby in it, or do you just? Yes, it or... does, and the baby comes out too. <laughs> Oh, I read if everyone wanted to give birth, you can have a yourself a nice little fetus for, for yourself. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to buy that, and then I saw it was two hundred bucks. So I was like, God, damn. no, it's pricey. Yeah, yeah it's it's pricey, pricey. But it looks, it looks, it looks like it's something worth. It paying. was yo, it'll be it cheaper was, than having a real kid. I'll tell you that. You know? <laughs> it was, it was designed by the special. Well, at least that version was created by a special effects company. It's the same. It's a remold of the the one that's on that life sized one that they had at E three. It's that just you know consumer version. So yeah, you know. credit for making something that's actually cool, you know, <laughs> like for a limited edition kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's literally a prop from the game, kind of like the bionic arm from Metal Gear Five, where you got the life size one. So yeah. it's interesting, and it comes with like a little um, keychain for uh, like um, like Luden's keychain, thing, yeah, uh, little, thing, little creature. By the way, shout out to everybody in the chat. They're all. Uh going off there enjoying this yeah, um I mean, it looks it looks interesting i mean you know i'm down yeah so, yeah a yeah, lot of the guys i'm it. seeing you know pixel right. pi- pixel protocol um you know reggie um I, I think i saw um oh glorious words not here yet is he is so, so, let's okay. hope that this collectible is not made of cheap plastic and arrives on time well, it is from Sony, so it is from Sony. Sony so, gets uh, reference. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is from Sony. Usually, their collector's editions are pretty damn good. Wait, was that a Fallout reference? Yes, it was. Oh, okay, it good. Was. <laughs> Just making sure. That could be a Dead Space, also Hi, fucking EA. Oh, oh man, man the one, come yeah. on, Wait, my my line cutter look like crap cutter. Oh shit, that was so bad. Uh, it's funny because from that picture, that <laughs> stupid ass picture that the line cutter had, uh, it looked like oh man, it's a life size line cutter. I was, I was cutter. so excited. So excited. Oh, oh, lasers excited. in it. No, well, what oh, what yeah, you can man. do now is take that line cutter and put it in the baby's hand from Death Stranding because <laughs> yes. it's about the right size. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh man, hey Chris, what do you think, man? We we haven't heard your voice in a while, man. I miss That's it. A, <laughs> the most cre- creative use of a ladder I've seen in thirty years. <laughs> yes. I mean, he was he was crossing ravines. I mean, man, yeah. he just pulled that shit out and he extended it up the mountain. I'm like, I haven't seen this since the original Legend of Zelda. Like, that's the most creative use of a ladder. <laughs> Usually, you just climb that shit. He's like, nope, I'm, I'm walking I'm on around it. the world. Yeah, he walked on it. Um, it was weird. I I was um confused because the scene where uh those guys uh, you I guess you play as another dude, and he was like beating up those um guys chasing him with the mask on yeah uh so is it you play multiple characters no that was i was still norman reedus he just had a different oh you just had a different outfit on oh i thought it was a totally different dude i was like who's this other guy norman Norman reedus has like two different like like they showed one version of him with the hat you know like a hat and sunglasses is another one with a hood so Mm -hmm. it's like he's got different outfits in the game yeah chris i saw you saw you different uh action figures man (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I I was like, is this another guy? I I was confused by that. Um. I, I mean, I'm very excited for the game. It's just 
like none, none, it doesn't get any less confusing. The more it's like lost, the more you see, it's like the more questions <laughs> you have, appear, yeah. you know. And it's like, so Mads Mickelson, I th- guess he was talking to the baby in the beginning. I'm mm-hmm. like, what yeah. the fuck? Who's he talking yeah, to? Yeah, you noticed oh, in okay. that trailer, every transition was a blinking eye. Well, did you hear when the baby yeah. talked back? It said, open your mind. <laughs> <laughs> he put his hand out. <laughs> yeah, put the hands out. He put his hands on the glass. He's like, oh. yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's got Guillermo del Toro and and the and the, and the, dire- and the director of um, what is it? Um, neon something neon. What was that movie called? Ah oh, man, forgot the name of that movie. He's another director. Somebody on chat will get it. Yeah, but just, he, Del Toro's in the game, right? They yeah, show his is. character. Yeah he's, like, yeah, he's in the game. Yeah, oh, yeah, and he's like lobotomized or something. Game. It's oh, kind of weird. Oh no, it's, it's, it. it's more like it's more like Guillermo Del Toro. Like it's more like Kadrima just said, "I'm gonna put all my friends in this game." There we go. <laughs> you know, you don't play yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't play yourself. You're just like, I'm just gonna get all, all these other guys that I know to be in the damn game. I want to hear Brett now. Because he's like neutral on Kojima, so I want to hear your thoughts, bro. Ah, Jesus, I'm not getting out of this one. Um, there's no winning here. Oh, go for it, Brett. Oh, yeah, don't worry. Whatever you say, it's not going to be bad. Like it's not going to be as bad as Brian's. Don't worry about it. Oh, dude. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm, not, I, <laughs> I'm not excited for this the same way for the, many of the same reasons that I didn't buy Days Gone. It looks slow, depressing, boring. Mildly uninspired and somewhat overproduced. It's just it's it's okay. I get it. You like it, there's pony down. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, it, 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 I get these big open worlds, um, a la Far Cry, and, and uh, well, pretty much pick whatever other game you want. My big problem is that it's it's huge, vast areas of boring nothingness, or these random kind of area spawn practically like just you go into an area and you're like, Oh, there's a bandit attack. Like, yeah, there's not. It's, it's just horribly scripted events trying to, to play it being random. And then there's these, these little nodes of interest that are spread all the way across the map. So the, to, to, to do anything, you have to go from point A to point B and have, you know, one to nine of these random, you know, "Quote unquote random scripted events happen to you, and it just it ends up being a cycle of rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. That ends up feeling more grindy than like old World of Warcraft did somehow. I think I, 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 I can understand where you're coming from on this, Brett. Where it's like this is the seems like the 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 odd thing that people that, that these a lot of game series do, where they like they set these things into these giant open worlds, but really there's actually not a lot there." And if yeah. you were a- if you were able to condense all the hours of actual game, you know, of you know story content into one focused location, it would near wouldn't even make that long of a game. But the 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 time that makes it longer is the, the fact of you walking to from one place to another and hitting some sort of random you know open world event. Ah, oh, they stole my cash. Ah, oh, I you know my horse is gone. I shot myself in the head. The dude hanged himself. There's a bunch of a bunch of a bunch of Ku Klux Klansmen hanging over there, you know. Yeah. Oh no, it's a it's a random group of ex bad guy that you know about. Yeah. So I mean, I can understand that sort of situation where it's like, uh, you know, like I, I personally, as 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 for me, I would prefer if it wasn't an open world game. You know, if it was a little bit more you know, a little bit more God of War, new God of War-ish, where essentially it all takes place in this one world. It feels open, but it doesn't, you know, at least every single section is kind of honed as opposed to just throwing a bunch of random junk at you. I don't even mind an open world. Just, mm. like, like we have, like, an open world that takes place in, like, I don't know, future Judge De- Dread Detroit, right? Like, maybe we don't need a whole city. We just need a really interactive 16 blocks. Like, let's take the Shemnu approach. Like, I'm just I'm just so sick of it. And whenever you get to these settlements, they're, they're, mu- they're little more than, like, a crafting bench and some set pieces and, like, a couple quest nodes. Like, there's a tent there, and there's three people waiting to give you quests, and there's the same crafting, uh, you know, storage box that, and you know crafting station that you had in the last place there's no reason to go out there it's just it's just 
dead space. And that, that's dead the thing space. that bothers me. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, at least to, like, Skyrim's credit, even as fucking old as, it, old as it is, like, you pick a direction, you go, you'll find some random little intriguing story bit or something like that. Like, that's the, that's the saving grace for Fallout. Like, you deal with the all the other stuff so that you can get to that point. These games... Like, I just, I don't know. They, I'm getting really bored of this same repetitive cycle. And I think I kind of hit my limit when I'm like, man, even Red Dead 2 really just isn't doing it for me. It's the same thing over and over again. And it's just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired of it. And I was, I was really hoping this was going to take, take place on like a derelict space station or some sort of like alien planet or something like that. And like, oh no, it's it's future dystopian Earth. I'm just like, ah, oh, fucking god. Okay, I'm surprised we don't have zombies in it. <laughs> Man, please, we don't, don't, don't know. We don't, we don't know. know. About we don't that. know. It could, you know. All right. Um, actually, well, I'll, I'll hold off on Brian because that's going to be the good one. Um, mm-hmm. Carlos. So, I like. <clears throat> I really like the story aspect. Even though I don't know what the hell's going on, it's intriguing. And it's something that's like, oh, I just want to dive deep into this story just to see what the hell this whole thing is about. So it was lost. True. True. Um, but it's still intriguing nonetheless. The thing with me is I I I'm not I don't know about the gameplay. I it's we got we got some we got some parts where they showed more walking and traversing through the through the land. We got the the one part where he's running away from the dudes, and they're they're hitting him, and he's losing items. We got one of them where he's shooting, like like a two second clip of him shooting somebody, and then there's other there's other gameplay where he's uh, like checking on the demons and stuff, where he's using the baby's powers and stuff like that. So for me, <laughs> yeah, baby powers, <laughs> baby powers. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm st- I'm just confused as to what most of this. I'm kind of the opposite of Brett because it looks like Brett already painted a picture of what the whole gameplay is going to be for this game. I I don't know what this the gameplay is gonna, like. I know some some aspects of the gameplay, but I don't know what most of the game is going to consist of. Is it going to be mostly just running yeah, away? Yeah, we from don't know the games? loop. Yeah, yeah, th- th- exactly. That's perfect because like. The video games they, they put you through a loop of like you know uncharted it's the enemies and the, the, you get into a place with a whole bunch of you hide and, and you shoot the, the duck and cover kind of stuff so we don't know what the loop is for this and if it's something that's not that entertaining then it, it might kill this game because it's like you just don't know but i'm i'm more interested in watching just a gameplay re- uh, trailer or like one of those walkthroughs where they just show gameplay where they go through maybe a stage or something of the game because i honestly, i fully expect that remember how that that big one metal gear solid 5 got i expect something yeah. like that you know i think that i think yeah there was going to be like i i have a feeling that like close to launch which is like tokyo game show you're probably going to see a little bit more or e3 which is literally or you know, e3 well i don't know about that oh yeah uh, yeah we'll see Maybe Tokyo unless, game, unless, Tokyo game unless, show, yeah. unless unless Jeff Keeley managed to get him to do this, and they're announcing all kinds of really? uh, all, uh, all kinds of stuff happening there. But I didn't see Kojima in one of those uh, announcements. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, so I for me, I want to be hyped for this game, and I'm 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 really hyped for the story of it. But the gameplay just didn't really get me. It's, it's I just, don't know. To me, the gameplay, you know, to be honest, it looks like it looks like they just re- 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 uh, replicated Metal Gear Five. Yeah, pretty to be much. honest, yeah. just the, <laughs> like just the way he moves, like he has the bend down button, which I'm sure is going to be the X button. I'm sure he's going to have a th- you know like a you know like a, a, a run button where you click in the thing. I think it's going to be almost like a like a spot on clone of Metal Gear 5's controls, which is not a bad thing. Which know? is not a bad thing. But yeah, I mean, even the menu was this. Was even the familiar. menu is sort yeah. of the sort of familiar. Mm-hmm. It almost looks like that iDroid stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. except except for going into first person mode, like in in Metal Gear Five, they actually let you see over his shoulder, and there's big goofy icons that show up on there. We're <laughs> not gonna, we're not gonna get a, a Ground Zeroes for for Death Stranding, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that'd oh. be awesome. I would mind well, that's that. Up you to, know? That's up to Konami. Oh wait. No. Oh wait. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, we probably won't. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> 
you know? But yeah, go ahead, bro. At least for me, it, it would help. Like, I'm still going to get this game just because I'm really intrigued, but I'm not 100% sold. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Adam, I want your take because you don't really care about Kojima and all that stuff. Nah, I you mean, like it, ones. yeah, I like the old ones. And then it starts getting all crazy and the singing and all the, the nonsense. But uh, I like the old ones. But um, for this one, it was okay. It was intriguing. It was different. A lot of different elements. But it, nothing grabbed me like, oh, I have to play this now. Mm -hmm. uh, it just looked like, oh, eventually I will play this. So I don't know. I, I wasn't that hyped even before when I first heard about it. So yeah. to see it now, it's like, okay, you know, there's some new elements and stuff, open, big open world. But again, I look at that window that it's coming out in, and I'm like, this is not my first pick on that list. This is uh, closer toward Christmas when it's on sale, you know? So. All right. All right, Brian, take us home, man. Um, this is going to be quite funny. I'm sort of like the same as Carlos and Brett on this What? One. I'm just kind of like... I'm okay by it. I'm not really enticed by it. I'm just like, okay, it looks all right. And then I like the theme that they're going for. The whole like America is divided and you have to um, like rejoin it all and connect it all through the strands. Okay, it sounds like an interesting idea. Um, I wonder if the people that think that everyone's a Nazi will understand what that means. <laughs> I can understand what the hell that means, but let's see if they're smart enough to, to understand. So that's a plus for me. Um, again, same with uh, Carlos. The gameplay, I'm just not sold on. I like, I haven't seen enough that tells me what I'm doing for like the next ten hours. So, I, so I'm just on the point where I'm like, okay, I like the story, I like the themes. Um, I'm used to Kojima's weirdness, so that's a thing. Um, <laughs> just now, a case of like, okay, what is the loop? What is the idea? Like, how do I get stuff done? You know. What am I going to do for the next 10 hours? I don't know yet. I'm not too sure. I see a lot of like moving around. It seems like some puzzle, like some environmental puzzle stuff with some stealth aspects in there, but um, they showed off some shooting in the Japanese gameplay one. So hence it's like, okay, so you'll be able to shoot some stuff, but is it like shooting as an like, actual shooting or is it just like a secondary thing is shooting? I, I I'm think, not too sure. I think, I think, I think just like, I think just like, so, you know, like the Metal Gear games, like the, at least the last one, they kind of give you the option to be kind of like balls to the wall where you can just shoot the shit out of everything in there. And then, or you could just be like, you know, passive and just like, you know, <laughs> knock everybody out somehow. Brian, I'm pretty sure it's uh, primarily briefcase combat with secondary gunplay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it'll be the ultimate uh, briefcase combat simulator. You yeah, know. like how can we, I want to see. I want to. You better be able to. That would be so cool if you could use the dumb ladder as a weapon. Like, what if you pulled that shit out and whacked everybody around him? That'd be insane. Imagine that, like in that'd an arc. That'd be some Dynasty Warriors bullshit. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Riku would bite then. Hey, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, Brian. I thought you were gonna go off on this game, man, because you weren't very like happy about it before. You were like, why are you people getting all hyped up? You know, for this. That was your like you know like your mindset at least to me no it's still much the same like i still understand why people are excited it it, it seems to be like yet another um kojima game with like kojima's weirdness like it seems like the guy loves loves to go all out you know and like and you guys ask why people make fun of him for saying that he makes films not games where when he makes a trailer that's eight minutes long <laughs> <laughs> the fuck's that about like that's like the first thing that caught my eye. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, Death Stranding trailer. 8 minutes, 50, 51 seconds. I'm like, the and, the ja and the Japanese one is 9. Yeah. That's a short so like, film. It was like, <laughs> normal, like, a normal game is like a trailer of like, what? 3 minutes? 4 minutes, maybe? It was like, oh, no, no, no. 10 minutes trailer. No, but that, that's the thing. He's a storyteller. Like, his, his narratives are, are very deep. Like, when I played Metal Gear Solid, I couldn't believe the, the cutscenes that were in there, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I I think the narrative in here will be tremendous. So him cutting it, to him, that's short. Cutting yeah. nine minutes to show you. By the way, so I got how a... many hours of cutscenes are going to be in this game? I was just about to ask that. About 50. <laughs> well, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 you Notice gotta, how Brian you gotta... kept saying 10 hours, right? He was talking about gameplay. 
Well, well, you know, you, well, you, well, your thing is like, you, you, well, you got to also understand, man, they got famous people in, in in those roles. They can't have them on for too long because they got to pay their asses. <laughs> I mean, uh, come on. How long was, uh, how long, you can count. I, I remember somebody counting how many, how much, um, um, what's his face for the last Metal Gear did of uh, what he did. What was his face? What's his face? Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland, right? Apparently, they counted how much, how many minutes of of uh, of uh, voice acting and stuff that he did in the whole game, and it's somewhere along the lines of like twenty minutes. Damn, <laughs> that's all they could afford. <laughs> that's all they, that's, yeah, that's all they could afford to keep him around. So, I mean, I, yeah, Norman Reedus is in the game, but I feel like in general, it's probably not. Gonna, it's going to be there's going to be long bits, but it's not going to be that long. You yeah, never know. Yeah, gonna so, be, Sony's got money now, you know. <laughs> they're not going to be doing. They're not going to. What was it? How long? How many hours of uh, um, cinematics did they say were in the? Was in the last Red Dead? It was a lot. I, I don't even. I, I don't, don't think know. I read that. Yeah, I don't it think gave I read some that. sort of number of how long, how much, how much, how many cinematics and stuff were in that game. Probably like a out. season's worth of TV or something. I don't. But they know. said it was a lot. Yeah. And again, these that guys crazy long. <laughs> Norman Reedus and Kojima are like best buddies and shit every time i look at their twitter they're always like hanging out and stuff like that so i don't know maybe he took a discount yeah, yeah. and also didn't he, he would have technically done more work for this game didn't he do all the mocap and everything for his yeah character? he did yep. yeah he did all the mocap yeah. so yeah every anytime he I mean, runs around and stuff like that's all him he he for suddenly could record his lines and hit the bar he probably didn't do them all <laughs> he's like how you doing <laughs> random, for venom snake you know mm -hmm. by the way i want to read some of the the comments here um glorious war says uh, Sony first party cynical cycle continues. I like how he capitalized all of that. Uh, cynical. Yeah, he, he goes first it was puddles, Kratos can't jump, and now people don't understand high concept sci fi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <Puddles>. <laughs> um, this one's this one's cool. And this is a sentiment but, I, I, I agree with. And uh, hold on, hold go, on. Ahead, go ahead, Brian. But go it's ahead. not first party Sony, though. Oh, like, oh, oh. Like, oh. Production is not a first party studio. Nope. By the way, before yeah. I read this other comment, Brian, tell us, um, you know, about, you know, what you think about this game's quote unquote exclusivity or lack of it, oh, yeah. actually. So, um, people started to get all high and mighty because people were like, oh, it's a PlayStation exclusive, blah, 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 blah. Um, even though that when Kojima first announced that he was working on a game project when he departed, he said that um, his, his, his next title was going to be on, well, he said that he was going to collaborate with Sony. And that's all he said. He never said anything about making it exclusive. And even when they were talking about it, like he never mentioned anything about other platforms, which was fine, you know. Um, and some odd reason people thought that it was going to be exclusive because it's De Decima, which only runs on um, PlayStation so far. So people were like, okay, so it must be a PS4 exclusive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I was like, okay, let's see how this pans out. So trailer drops, and I noticed something very interesting. The, um, the lack of every, the lack of the three words every PlayStation guy likes to hear, only on PlayStation. It's in none of the uh, marketing uh, materials. So at the end of the trailer, the box art, anything like that. I've not seen the terms only on PlayStation, which is quite fascinating because Sony are very quick and fast to put that on any game that's exclusive to their platform. So which makes me believe that Death, that Death Stranding is not exclusive to PlayStation. Maybe as a time exclusive, but not as a console exclusive. Oh, sorry, not as an actual exclusive, more as a time exclusive. That's mm. my theory. It could be interesting, and, you know. Um, that would definitely steal the thunder of not only of like the the ponies beating their chest, but the guys who are saying that people are only hyped up because this game is exclusive. You know, no. and, you know. By the way, I, by the way, because th that actually leads me to a good uh, segue. But Manny, hold that thought. Um, I'll, I'll read this from GZDR. He goes, um, and I again, I I, act, I completely agree with this sentiment. He goes. Uh, people want to buy this game because of the creator. It's like someone uh, is going to say, hey, let's go see that new Chris Nolan movie. Who cares mm -hmm. what the name is? It's Nolan. You, let's go see. Let's go buy the new Miyazaki game. You don't care. It's Miyazaki. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. Like, because, OK, so there's a lot of people online saying, oh, you guys don't have, you know, you haven't seen any gameplay. You don't know anything about this game. Why are you getting hype? It's like because of Kojima. That's why people are, you know, they look forward to this guy. He is, you know, I'm fucking I'm going to say it. he's pretty much like a christopher nolan in video games like you buy his shit just because of who he is because of his track record like yeah you may not know everything about um you know death stranding 
but you know it's Kojima, and you know he's gonna deliver something that you're gonna like if you're a fan of his. To it's begin common with, with you authors know? like Stephen King. Exactly. You know. Yeah, you know what you're gonna get into, you know, or but, but you, you know what you're getting essentially. But so, it, uh, but and here's the thing: I don't understand why people don't understand that concept. Like, okay, you you follow these like artists, you know, because they do things you like. You follow these movie stars. You follow yeah, the, these basketball people. Why? Why can't you do that with a game developer? It's a little weird to me, you know? I have a question. Like, Brad, you fuck with Miyazaki all day, every day, don't you? Yeah, well, uh, here's here's the thing that I think... There's a Even in that lousy film, here. The Wind, wind Rises? <laughs> Go ahead, Brad. I, I, think, I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding going on here. Um, the reason people get hyped for this kind of stuff is because they want to get hyped. Uh, I think there's two ways to look at just about every situation. Like, let's say there's a, a movie coming out. You don't know if it's going to be good, some Cara de Toro movie. Uh, you're excited about it. Some people lean into that hype. They get really excited because there's things to be excited about. Okay, Right now, it's a mixed bag. It's a mystery. Okay, There's things that you know you're excited about and things that uh, could be not so good. Some people choose to get excited about those things. And then there are people that are you know, saying, like, well, you're not guaranteed all these things. The real heavy, heavy, heavy cynics. And I'm a cynic, so I mean, like, people even further down that hole than me. And they're kind of the mindset of, well, you're not guaranteed not to get disappointed, so why would you get hyped yet? Like, you don't know what the, what the gameplay is. You don't know what this is going to be. You don't know what this is going to be. And the, the short answer to those people is because they know enough little things. They know enough. They they, they know Norman Reedus is in it. They know, they know it's going kind of uh, weirdly psychedelic sci-fi. Uh, they know Kojima's doing it. That's enough for people to get excited if they want to. Now, granted, like, I've there's probably a situation where you say like, well, it might be time to temper that. And you have that option of tempering it, but some people celebrate hype. Some people enjoy getting excited about it. Some people get excited for their birthday. Some people can't wait for Christmas time. Some, some people, men just want to watch the world back. Right. Yeah. And then there's other people who just are waiting for the next big, terrible thing to happen and then collapse on their head. I honestly, I'm not part of that group. And so as somebody who leans into hype, I can tell you, if I live my life always being ready to be disappointed, even when I'm proven wrong and thrilled about something, then the next thing around the corner, I'm prepared to be disappointed about that. I live my life in perpetual disappointment, so I like to get hyped. I like to get excited about things. That way, even if that thing disappoints me, there's something else I'm hyped around about around the corner. You think I live my life in perpetual disappointment. I live my life in perpetual excitement. And that's how some people are choosing to look at this. There's all these good things to look forward to, and so they're going to enjoy the hype. And they're, I'll be honest, I think that's the best way to do it because they're going to get six months out of, oh, God, here it comes. And that, that's it, fucking enjoyable as opposed to being like, well, let's see how this is. They'll sit it down. They'll get, they'll get their time play out of it. They'll enjoy it. But really, what's that 20 hours versus the six months leading up to it? I mean, fucking why, why does everybody think they're too fucking cool for this shit? That's what I don't understand. Like, why are you too cool to get hyped? Why are you too cool to get excited? You better than the rest of us? Just fucking like... Let let down, man. You don't have to try and be the fucking Fonz. You can get excited about something for every now and then without having, you know, other than Schadenfreude. Jesus Christ, you people. Um, I was gonna go off on a huge rant right now, but you said everything I wanted to say just more eloquently and less angry. So yeah, listen to Brett. <laughs> I wanted to say the same thing because these motherfuckers online, like, like, why do you feel the need to shit on everybody's parade? If you don't give a fuck about the game, why are you join in a conversation? Stay out of it. Let people have their fun. You know, for example, and we're gonna talk about this later. Call of Duty. You know me. I don't give a fuck about Call of Duty. Do you see me shit on people's parades? No, I didn't. Actually. I, I do need to quickly say this because I tweeted out like, oh, Call of Duty. Did you see that trailer? You didn't see any fucking story. You didn't see any gameplay. This is bullshit. Why are you all getting hype? People took me seriously. They didn't realize I was doing a farce of what they were saying about fucking Death Stranding. <laughs> you I know? blocked you after you said that. <laughs> I, you know, I, I put like, it in quotes and everything. Yeah. This is it. But I'm like, yo, but, but Brett's like, yo, let people have their fun, man. And I used to be that motherfucker, too. I used to be like, listen, man, fuck that shit. It's going to like, I always believe you should live life prepared to be disappointed because when it disappointment does comes you won't get upset now i'm like eh, fuck that i'd rather be happy and then eventually become disappointed than like just be you know miserable the entire time you know what i'm saying i think that's a better way to live so don't I, don't take people's fuck mandy this is not you because you're mr cool 
You know, <laughs> you're you're not you're not upset. You're not shitting on anybody's parade. You're not hyped. You're Mr. Cool. You do your the way you do it is really good too. That's pretty healthy. But I'm talking about these guys that are just constantly spewing this fucking venom. You know, it's like, do you really need to be shitting on people's parades like that all the fucking time? Like, I understand there's some guys out there that do it for clicks or whatever. Fine, oh, you yeah. know, or you're just naturally predisposed to be like that. That's fine too, but. Let people have their fun, but man. They, these people were always you know? there. It's just social media gives them an outlet. Yeah, they've no. always been there. We all bumped into them, whether it's in school or somewhere else. Oh, yeah, they always one exist. Guy. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, we're all into this. That game sucks. Or, <laughs> or, or those are kids. That's kid stuff. That's kid shit. There's always going to be Yeah, that. no, there's always yeah. that. But I, I, I say, for you know, you know how many times I want to do that? But I'm like, Tony, what the fuck's wrong? Why would you do that? Like, I've I seen people talking about this fucking rat game. I'm like, why are you playing a fucking rat game? This looks stupid. That's what I wanted to say, but i didn't do it because i'm not going to be an asshole you know it's like come on yeah. man everybody has their own thing that's all exactly man um but yeah no, i i'm i'm very excited if the game disappoints me oh well at least i had those like brett said those six months of being happy <laughs> you know what's going to take that me, shit away let me, from let me, me let me, let me you give know? you a perfect example real quick let me give you a perfect example what was more fun sitting around the last six months speculating on how the end of game of thrones is going to end or the ending of game of thrones <laughs> that's a good point by the way there's a balance to that too because like i noticed this was early i'm like oh shit why is it that waiting for something is better than actually getting it so i learned to kind of balance that but you're right about that there's a lot of fun just the the anticipation the hype talking about it thinking about where it could go you know there's something to that man but yeah, yeah, it is fun. It's 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 a lot of fun. So I'm in that boat, you know. But yeah, again, I yeah, saw this shit. Like I couldn't help. I got a little salty out there, just a little, little bit, because I'm like, what the "Fuck you guys doing, man? Let people enjoy their shit, you know." Welcome to my life, Tony. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Brad. You know I like to rib you, though, man. By the way, Brad, okay. since you're talking I mean, here, about here, that, I am trying to fall out 76 in peace, and every motherfucker wants to pop my feet and be like, "Hey, you know that game sucks, right?" Yeah, yeah hey, the, I know. Yeah, I'm yeah. having fun though. Hey, by the way, Brett, the, the day that um they were, you know, 10,000 people were watching that stream, 470 were watching my anthem. <laughs> I'm just saying, I had to look up, yo, how many, how many is anthem getting around? Literally 470, like, damn. And there's 10,000 motherfuckers literally just watching hands on a screen. <laughs> yeah, dude, I get his, uh, that was. Oh, man. And, and Manny were one of or, or two of them. And I, only, I didn't watch all of it. <laughs> oh no! We, I, I I just left my stream just playing the whole time. Oh no! I didn't do it. I was like, "This is fucking hands." Know. I'm not gonna watch this shit. No, I, 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 yeah. I figured it. I figured out what was happening, and I just like, "All right, I get we'll get it." And then when I woke up the next day, oh hey, look, there's less hands. Ten thousand people still in there, by the way. <laughs> the same More dude. people. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, they were ready, man. Um. So yeah, November eighth. Yeah, you, yeah. you did that shit with Miyazaki, though. Come on, I'd be all on fucking board. Yeah, yeah you know you would. Yeah, the height. The show be like, dude, they uncovered a new letter. What do you think it means? <laughs> <laughs> Miyazaki can't get away with stuff like that. Yeah. By the way, we're not gonna do this now. Um, but I need you and Chris to be on Sunday show. We got asked this question. Please don't answer it now. But they wanted you to rank every uh Soulsborne game in order, and then explain why you like them, and then rank all the weapons in order. None of us can answer these questions. You two weren't on the show on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we were, oh, I was okay. like, I like this weapon in Bloodborne. <laughs> you know, the only one that I played. <laughs> yeah. So I'm throwing that at you guys. Keep it in the back of your head in case I forget it, because I want you to answer that. Like, that's a perfect question for both of you guys. You know, like go deep into this shit. Anyway, I think, I, yeah, I think we got um everything. Unless you want to say anything else about this, right? By the way, I need to quickly apologize because Google Hangouts is on some fucking bullshit where I can't flip my, you know, you know, view. This is why my Sony hat's fucked up. This is why my Kojima shirt's fucked up. But just letting you know that I can't, I can't do anything about it, people. Um, so I uh, mean, I, like, yeah, I was trying thought, to say yeah. something. I was trying to say stuff uh, like multiple times, but I kept getting a uh, buzz. Uh, Yo, better throw down, motherfucker! You, what are you throwing down on me, <laughs> motherfucker? <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, I mean, it looks cool. I mean, uh, you know me. I'm always, I'm always very, you know, very e even kill. I always drive the same speed down the, the speedway, you know. And, and if I get there and it's not, as not, not, you know, not, um, not up to par or not that good, I'm like, okay, if it is. Then I'm like, hey, all right, good stuff. It's like, yo, man, I'm 55 on the highway 25. Yo, man, I'm driving 50. I'm cruising. I got my cruise control on, man. Manny, you <laughs> you can drive 55. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but let's move on, man. Um, the next big thing, and this news dropped today. By the way, okay, so there's a new Call of Duty game. Not a surprise, you know. This one's literally called Call of Duty Modern Warfare. 
Like <laughs> these guys weren't even trying, but apparently they're doing uh, something new. They... But, uh, but, 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 but let me finish. Let me finish. I, Adam, I know you're ready to unleash. Um, he wants to, he I wants just, to get you. No, yo. save it for the show, motherfucker. Yeah, save it for the show. No, I just gotta give. And Adam, this is me. You giving you props before you go on. Okay, because you guys, if you've been listening to Throwdown since they went, you know how we feel about Call of Duty on the show. We don't give a fuck about Call of Duty. That's why I love the fact that Adam's here. He's a fan because every time Call of Duty comes, we're always like. Oh, we it's a big game. We gotta cover it, but none of us like this fucking game. Then we got Adam, who loves Call of Duty. So I'm glad that we have somebody who actually genuinely likes this shit. You know, so Adam again to me as an outsider, I'm like, so you're going back to modern warfare? Really? Like who the fuck cares? You know, but apparently they're doing something new. So uh, go ahead, man. All right, man. This is a big one. Damn, it's like that. Get ready. This is probably here's uh everybody get something to drink, relax, take some deep breaths. It's gonna be a half an hour of a lot of Call of Duty. All right, so we know right off the bat Infinity War, right? Infinity War. Now, this is the original group that did Call of Duty. We've got the, the three that they cycle through, but this is the one that left Metal of Honor. So whoever's remaining, because a lot of those guys also left to respawn, this is that crew. Okay. That, we got that out the way. Next, this is a new engine that they're working on. This isn't the same old engine, which is great. And some of the things that they pointed out is the, the environment. They're using real maps from real locations, so it's not going to be just some fictional world. One of the things that they showed, one of the videos that they showed uh, gameplay from was in London. And it was all real locations, real streets. So they, like, if you run down this street, you'll recognize whatever buildings in those spots. So that's great. Um, one of the other things after this is that uh, Price, they mentioned and they showed him in the trailer. Price is one of the key characters that was in the world of uh, modern warfare. He was one of the, he's a British soldier, he's a sniper, and he does a few other things, but he's been a key component. That was him, there was Soap, there was a few others. It looks like the rest of the crew is also going to come back. Um, modern Warfare, the fact that they're using Modern Warfare is because they're going back to the original idea of Modern Warfare, which was, it was supposed to take place of within our modern time. As the series progressed, it just went off the rails. They started adding all these other cool elements. Yeah, they're kind of cool, but it was just a change with the game, but then it lost focus, whether it was climbing walls and uh, the different drones you were having, and then it, it just got so crazy that uh, it just went off the rails. And that whole real world feel one of going to Black Ops. And that's why a lot of people like Black Ops. It was like, oh, wow, you know, I feel like I'm part of an elite group and we're doing all the stuff. It's like, yeah, but that was Modern Warfare. And that's why everyone liked the Modern Warfare 1 and 2, right? They were like, well, this is what we wanted before it went off the rails. So they realized that, and that's what they're going back to. But uh, they're going back to it in a very gritty feel. Uh, uh, big shout out to Prestige, key friend of the show, big uh, YouTuber for Call of Duty, and he was, was flown out to Infinity War to play uh, the first two missions. And he pointed out that, I mean, there was one, I don't even know if I should say it, because it is a spoiler. You know, there are spoilers in it, but the, the point is, uh, it gets to, it's going to get very controversial, because there is one part where you do get to play as a child, and you do pick up a gun, and you do have the choice to kill someone. And there's going to be a few of those. Uh, there was another scene that he described where there was a woman holding a baby and you could shoot the woman and the baby if you felt like it, you know, and you're the good guy. That's the other thing. So it's not so much of like, if you remember from the other ones where they had this one mission with the airport where you could bypass and it was cause, Oh, it's graphic. You're playing a bag, a group of bad guys. You're going into an airport and you're just unloading your clips. Get that there. Yeah, you could skip that, but this is different. This is, these are good guys, and they're just dealing with real situations, and they were going after some terrorists, and the terrorists were in a house, and they had their families and stuff around. And there's a lot of that type of dialogue that goes back and forth. One of the things that he kept pointing out is just a dialogue. It's very serious. Just the whole approach, which reminds me of the whole Rainbow Six, you know, Ubisoft's Rainbow Six. That's what that was. It was a very serious approach to uh tactical squad base we're gonna handle some serious terrorist shit and, or uh other activities military special ops with uh none of the glitz and glamour this is just if this shit was real this is how it would go down 
type of thing. And uh, with the new engine, one of the things that they, they pointed out is that, yeah, you could shoot through walls in the other one with certain guns, but sort of like with uh, Rainbow Six, you could shoot through walls and look through the hole. And you could see how far the bullet went through, whether it hit someone or if it went from that wall to the back wall of the room. You'll see the mark. You know, so that's pretty cool. And then they also talked about the sound. So let's say depending on the gun and how many rounds you have, it's not just like the clips are just popping out within a, re a repeat motion of like, all right, it pops out, it falls in the floor, pops out. Now, depending on which weapon you have and your surroundings, the, the shells can go all over the place and bang off like another wall to the side or hit the drum and you'll hear a different sound. I'm like, why am I hearing this other sound? Oh, my, my clips are hitting... Uh, a, a barrel that's next to me and it's making a different sound which is great you want know to say with the cut especially with call of duty it's all about sound if you play with your headset and if you're playing online or even in the campaign you want to hear the footsteps you want to hear if someone's running from left to right behind you you could hear you go from one ear cup to the other it's all about sound so uh I, everyone pretty much knows from what we saw this there is a campaign and that's a key element, and that's what everyone's super happy and praising. All right, yeah, it's a campaign, and we knew they were going to go back, and we all know the story with the whole Black Ops 4 and that they fell short time-wise, and that's why it was really removed. It was it was supposed to have a campaign, but they just didn't have the time. So this one will have the campaign. They did remove the season pass, finally, getting with the program like all the other ones, no season pass, but there will be microtransactions. You know, don't don't think that there's not. They said there will be, but most of it is going to be cosmetics and characters. So they're introducing where you can get these characters called operators. So it, it's if uh, you guys play the Black Ops Four, you know the specialists that they introduce, and there's all these different uh, classes. Well, that's scrapped, and now there's these operators, and these operators are have complete backstories, have different cosmetics, have different variants for their weapons. One of them they showed had a gully suit and he had all these other little cool perks on his outfit. So it's it's a different approach, but I guess this is how they're going to make their money with the microtransactions and to uh, bypass having a season pass. And I'm cool with that. Very cool with that. You know, I, I th just get with the program, let everybody have the maps and uh, we'll deal with that. So we're all on the same playing field and that links to the next part, which is cross-play. This will have cross-play with Xbox, PS4, PC. They later clarified they would like to have all of them talking. Doesn't mean it's all going to happen. They mm. talk to Sony. Sony says, yeah, yeah, it'll work, but to an extent. So we probably have PS4 to PC, but not PS4 to Xbox, as opposed to Xbox wants to play with everybody. Same type of thing. Now, here comes the big kicker. Do you really want console players playing with PC? PC obviously have an advantage with a mouse and keyboard. That precision is, they're going to be murdering people constantly. So yeah, on paper, it sounds great for cross-play with PC. But when you start playing, people are like, yo, we're getting killed constantly. It's a lot easier. I mean, hell, we're seeing it with Division 2 with the raid. You know, and how people saying we saw it took what like five six hours for the the team to complete it, uh, the the raid on PC, and it was like thirty six hours on PC. That precision shooting is just more prone, and it's available on PC. So that's going to be something interesting, and maybe they'll have an option where you can select. Well, I just want to match make with people on my console, you know, as opposed to match making it with you know PC players, because uh, that's going to be a pain in the ass dealing with them all right so we already talked to no season pass we got the cosmetics they already said that's going to happen now here's the other thing there's a new season pass but again i have a feeling they're going to pull like all the other games are pulling saying with the no season pass year one you know they already said that they see a long-term plan will follow this especially with the multiplayer and all that i have a feeling they're going to pull the same thing We'll see, yeah, year one, and that's why they don't even bother mentioning it because as the months go by and everyone's already fatigued playing the same old stuff, they're like, hey, guess what? We've got year two coming if you want. Now that's going to be a fee, and they're all doing it. They all do it. Division two, the next one, and they already said it's going to be a fee. All the other ones that are dealing with that do it with a fee. So there goes that. Um, there, A lot of people were talking about the exclusivity message that PlayStation posted. They're like, wait, what exclusivity? What are you talking about? What's Everything's supposed to be coming out at the same time. Yes, but PlayStation is still going to have seven days of uh, time exclusivity. So just like the way it is with the current DLC, 
it where usually it's like a few months now it looks like it's going to be like seven days so let's say the next map pack comes out that's free for all but playstation guys will get it a week early so that's still in effect they're still going to go with that all right let's see what here all right we talked about the new locations everything is supposed to be real locations they went to those locations did real mapping which is great so a lot of people will recognize some of these spots all right we got the no specialist they changed that one up mm, i'm just going through my notes we talked about the operators all right we got the backstories all right oh they have already announced five uh different uh pre-order packages you got three digital ones and two physical the first physical is just a standard and the second is a steel book and it also comes with uh control freaks for those who are familiar with those are those attachments that you put on the thumbsticks to rise them up a little bit. You know, a lot of people seem to like using them. I thought about getting them, not sure how it would feel. So, but th it comes with that. So I think that's a hundred dollars set for that one. And uh, that's what we know so far. You know, so it's going to take a, a serious approach. It's got the new engine. And of course the key components of not having the, the season pass so everyone's on the same playing field. And I think this is all a test. I think this whole version is a test for a bunch of things. One, do people want the campaign? Do they really want it? Let's see. Now we can do the comparison. We gave them one without it. We saw the sale numbers. Now let's see with this. Two, let's try it without a season pass. Is this going to keep the player base? Is it going to grow the player base? Because that's always been the issue. That's why a lot of other games removed the, the season pass structure because of the like, hey, it divides things up. You know, let's say people want to come back and play, but they don't want to put the extra money into it. And then you have the, the people that did put the extra money and they're playing with the same group of people. You know, there's no new groups. That's why they were constantly giving away a free map here, a free map there, just trying to build up those player bases. And from what other games have seen, there was no growth in that market, which is why it was best just to kill it. You're just dividing it and then eventually people get turned off and don't want to play. You know, so we'll see how that goes. Um from what we understand, there will be no Battle Royale in this version. And that also makes sense because they're still trying to keep Black Ops 4 alive. You know, that still want, They still want that to be relevant. That is their multiplayer, and I think they're going to continue with that. Seems like it's making money, not gang bus money like some of uh, the other ones like Fortnite, but it's still pulling in some money. So this is going to be the alternative. It's like, hey, you wanted all this other stuff? Here it is. This is it. Take it or leave it. You know, And right now, it sounds great. You know, the story, everything sounds very serious. It's a different approach. It's it's not as crazy, and it's going to be touchy. And I would I find it interesting that they decide to go this route where it's more edgy. And I heard there's a lot of those moments, a lot of these moments where it sort of like pulls you in a certain direction, like, do you really want to do this? And I could see that becoming a big deal in the mainstream media when they start talking about video games and how real do they want to get. From what I understand, a lot of the stories that they add into this story are things that were from the real world, from news, things that are happening, it's like some of the London bombings and things like that. And also remember, the people that wrote this script are the same ones that did Uncharted and The Last of Us. These are the guys that left. So they, they put this together. So it's going into that gritty feel. And we know that they're able to do it and, and to bring that emotion. Wait, Adam, I'm, I'm confused, though, like... Are you looking forward to this game or not? No, oh, I am. Yeah, you already yeah, know. Yeah, you yeah, already yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. He's so I'm, excited. He's. I calm, am very. Uh, you yeah, know? I'm very excited because they're they're doing major changes. I mean, so often it, it was always the same old, same old. You know, besides the the past one, which had the the battle royale, but besides that, it was it still felt like the same old, same old. The this sniper is, dude is in it, right? Price, price is in it. Yeah, He's the key. yeah, price is in it, and that's his voice that you hear in the trailer. The dude that because so, I, I I still remember I still remember his voice because in 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 the in the in Call of Duty Four that's he's the one guiding you into like doing in that one mission it's like aim for the one on the left yeah 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 good yeah. job yep yep you know so he's he's in it, and that's the thing a lot of those guys didn't die they didn't die even though they had a nuke explode and then all this other craziness happened and it just it went off the rails and hopefully this works out because if it does then we'll see more of it and. The campaign will remain within Call of Duty, which I hope it does. They need to bring back Ghost. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See, oh, well, that's what I was also thinking. I was like, this 
everything that I've seen and, and I didn't want to I've thought about it. I wrote this whole segment about breaking mm-hmm. down the two missions that these guys played because they were sent down there and they played two full missions. And I don't want to do it because that that's serious spoilers because yeah. they confirmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah if any word confirmed that this those two missions are not just beta missions, they are actually in the game, you know, and so but I but the fact that I even know was like shit. This would have been one of those like, oh man, what this is going to be great when I play it. But then again, it's going to be great in a weird way because this is it's heartfelt. It also reminded me of Homeland. If anyone listening ever watched Homeland, and there was one season yeah. in particular where uh, it was an area in the Middle East and the area got bombed. It was the wrong location. Some people died. Some kids survived, and now they're bitter. You know, they hate Americans. Why? Because their family died and this whole thing. And there's going to be some of those elements. You know, some bitterness comes up. And you get it. You have to, you're seeing from a different perspective in a way of what's going on. But it's real. This type of stuff is happening out there in the world. I think, I think, I think that what they're trying to do is they're trying to give, um, give players the sort of, these sort of choices that a person in the military does have to make. Exactly. When they're, when they're in those sorts of situations, yes, you 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 are working toward this what is considered to be you know well, you know the the force a force of good, but you, in order to do that good, you end up exactly doing a lot of fucked up shit. There's a gray line, yeah. There's a gray line. There's certain situations, you know, sort of like what I said with the woman. They, they no spoilers, but there was other situations with the woman, and sometimes eh, some things you have to do, you know. But it's up to you. You make that choice. You don't make the choice. Now, they didn't really specify if pointing your weapon at one of these suspects makes a difference, mm-hmm. you know, because maybe if you point the weapon, then the person will put the weapon down, you know, or double gets their decision. Mm-hmm. Or does it still happen? That would be cool. Because remember, there was that one game that came out where you would point your gun and the person was like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and they'll put their weapon down and back up. I forgot what it was called. It was a... It was sort of like The Last of Us. It came during that time, and you run out of bullets, and you start. We talked about it, I think, last week, where you start beating a person up with your gun. You know, you beat them up with guns and stuff. But uh, yeah, so it, a lot of it sounds great. It sounds like they're getting more serious, and that's why they brought back Modern Warfare. I guess that's why it made more sense for them. So in a way, this really is a reboot. If this works out, at least, and they don't. No one buys it, and then they scrap it. All right, forget it. It's Battle Royale 24-7, oh, and man. Blah, 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 which I hope not, and I'm sure Activision hopes not because they have three studios doing this cycle, and we already heard about what's happening for the, the 2020 version, where now it looks like it's a, a two-year cycle as opposed to three because now they're using the Black Ops team to work on that one to help to because they want to do the whole Battle Royale thing again, you know, and a few other things. So this is this is key to see if this works out and i hope it does it's going to be very gritty and it, it could be good or bad i think it's going to be good uh from what the people that did play they didn't see too many of the michael bayish type moments that we're accustomed to seeing because they're going for a more uh, realistic serious approach you know so we're not going to see guys super flying out of windows and surviving mega jumps and all that craziness you know so let me ask you about the um the cross play because from what I saw, just you know, the reactions, right? Um, people are pretty excited about it, but it seems like people are under the assumption that it's everybody gets together. Even I was under the same assumption, but you're telling me that it's not exactly going to be like that. From the people that were there that spoke with them after they played, they asked them, and they said, "The way it is is that they do have that option turned on for crossplay everywhere, and they've already worked it out. Of course, it's going to work on PC. They worked it out on Microsoft. They're all cool with it. PlayStation." is on board to an extent hmm. yeah that's what i'm so, saying because you know yes even i was like yo are we finally gonna see you know who's the better gamer xbox or x playstation well, well, that, well, that's, can we, yeah. can we mean, possibly would, get something like that and not only that this would be the first major pay title to offer that mm. we've always talked about like oh well all these games you know they come we got rocket league all the small ones where here's a triple a title yeah that's at a 60 dollar value that's going to offer that so it basically, the way the, the rep made it sound is like, hey, it, it's up to PlayStation if they want to play nice. The option is there. It's turned on. The feature's there. They just have to say they're cool with it. Interesting. So they're cool with the PC aspect of playing, but when it comes to playing nice with Xbox, mm, that's a whole other thing. But that's why they mention Xbox, PS4, and PC, because they, they could all do it. Just doesn't necessarily mean they could all do it together. Yeah, yeah, because like... 
you know, and we talked about this before whenever we talked about crossplay, right? How like it's gonna take a big studio to really make this like mm-hmm. go nuclear. Like yeah. I th- yeah. like again, remember with the whole fall for fall, um Fortnite fall, fall, Fortnite thing, I was like, yo, why isn't anybody else asking for this? What's up? And then you were like, wait till the other, the big guys do it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so to me, if this takes off, like ash people want it. I think this is going to, you know, yeah. usher in the era of like crossplay for the big AAA games, you know, multiplex. And it makes sense why Activision wants to do this because of sort of like why they got rid of the season pass. They're seeing their player base get fragmented by all these different DLCs. And so they're like, how can we get everybody together just so we have one big pool? Well, this is how you do it. You get rid of the season pass and then you start merging these online uh, databases. And that's what yeah. they're trying to do now. If they can get Sony on board and say, hey, listen, this will still bring money. This will bring even more money. If they know that there's still people playing the system and there's still things going on, then we, you'll sell more copies. It's it's not a downfall to play with others. You know, now, it comes up to the whole chats and, and can you add friends and, and how do you find them? That, I mean, that's a whole other thing. I don't know how they're going to implement that. I'm sure there's going to have to have their own little friend list or uh account listing sort of like how uh a lot of the other ones deal with it blizzard also has their own little friend list when you do the the battle net and type of thing so it, it'll probably have to do something like that so then that way you could pair up but man we're this is one step into that direction because the next step after that is cross progression yeah if this works cross progression i mean that's what and i talked about it even before when everybody's like oh i'm not a hyper cross play and i'm like yeah that's cool and all but man cross progression that is the badass feature right there in fact i could just go into one of the say if i, I want getting a game for something for another console and i already had my profile like division and want to jump another one i just sign in and poof it's there because we already know those save files are not even local anymore they're all on the server they already have them ubisoft has all our save files so they already have it. So why can't I just sign in with it on the PC end or whatever? And then poof, there's my high level 450 character or 500 character. Why do I have to start from scratch? So I think we're getting there. But uh, hopefully this works out. And hopefully by the time it does come out, we'll get a, a definitive answer from PlayStation. Like, yeah, you know what? You can play with everybody. You can play with everybody. And then that's it. But uh, yeah, this it's breaking a lot of grounds with this one. And then- hopefully it pans out. Then what you're saying is that the reason, well, it seems like Sony's not playing ball with crossplay or Black Ops at the end of it. Well, what, what, what you mean for this one? They didn't mention anything yeah. about the Black Ops. Yeah, with this one, it looks oh, like yeah. More... yeah, it looks like they're on board with doing crossplay, but they haven't given them a definitive answer whether they want to play nice doing it with Xbox. They're cool with doing it with PC. Mm-hmm. So that's why they were able to put it on the box and, and within the speech of the, the commercial saying with crossplay. It, but, it may it thing is it's like I I think the one portion of it it may have to do their the trepidation probably may have to do with the with the sort of deal that Sony does have with them for the exclusive whatever things that they put in. You know, the last yeah. few Call of Duty games have had some sort of specific PlayStation exclusive, and I think that they're. Well, Right now, it that might somehow affect that. It, well, right now, from what they've said, there's none of that, just with the time. So I could see maybe the time being an issue. So like, let's say if you're we're playing on PS4 and we got the the new maps that came out, right? Yeah. And we have that full week for matchmaking. Obviously, we can't match make with PC players or Xbox players because they won't have those maps. Mm-hmm. You know, so unless they have to figure something out there, how does that work out then? Because if the whole idea of removing the season pass to get everybody in the same playing field, well, that's gonna that's not really gonna apply for that one week, you know. And uh, we'll see where that goes. And then of course cosmetics, but I think they figured that out with uh, Fortnite. Because I know with Fortnite they said that when you play across whether there's a PlayStation or Switch or whatever, each console has some cosmetics that are exclusive, mm-hmm. and so the other players just don't see that. They don't see what you're wearing. So if you have, I don't know, like a weird outfit from that's only available in uh, the the PlayStation Four guys on Xbox, but they are um, the Switch where they won't see it. They'll see you wearing some other generic outfit. So that's that's what they've worked out. Because I know for other games, at least for the wrestling for the wrestling games and stuff, you have all the content. It's already loaded in your console, and it'll just generate it. You know, so we'll see, but. 
Yeah, no, and, and then the fifth, release date is dropping. I was going to say, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's right. Uh, October twenty fifth. Interesting. That is you know. what a, uh, two weeks before Death Stranding, right? Yeah, yeah, no, d- uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Two weeks before Death Stranding. That's crazy. That's what I'm saying. It's within that window. There's a lot happening, and then of I'm course, wondering, during... I'm wondering. You know, I'm wondering if yeah, two weeks like exactly. Two weeks. Mm, yeah, I'm wondering went, if yeah. Feel, they feel if they they feel like they'll be safe with that. You know, in other words, like they lock down these sorts of dates. You know, to be honest, I don't think I I could. I'm just. I could be completely wrong right now. I don't think there's a lot of crossover between, uh, you know, Death no, Stranding no. fans and Call of Duty fans. Like, Manny, you and I again, Call of Duty? I don't think so. <laughs> no, we're not touching Call of Duty. <laughs> you know, and Adam's probably not t- t- touching Death Stranding. Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't think I don't think it will be a problem. It's 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 the same market. That, I mean, uh, the same time frame. These Call of Duties always come out during yeah. the late October and November. They all do it. Then we got the sport titles that all come out around this time. And, you know, it's it's uh, the typical ones that, oh, man, what is a... Uh, I mean, we we still don't get have all the release dates. I think for Ubisoft games, but they usually release one or two. Yeah, the fall. This window. Yeah, yeah, and then of course the well, wrestling. Oh, Adam, we, come down. Um, what you call it? A breakpoint is coming out in October. What? Oh, it is October. See, all right. So there you go. There's yeah. another one that's dropping within that not, window. Uh, what, was it, what about the other one? That's Control, not that being the um, Control is down there too. Um, I don't know. I thought Control was supposed to be the spring, but we're already about to be hit but, uh, summer. I mean, you know. Yeah. So it's, I'm, gonna, it's, I'm gonna look that up right now. Uh, I, got I got it right now. You'll hit it up, I'll, and I'm gonna do yeah. um, breakpoint. Um, and what I'm I'm thinking, and I mean, this is a lot of people. We saw it online. A lot of people were bitter uh, that uh, Black Ops Four oh, had no campaign. I, October Control f- is August. So oh, August. Per- ooh, I oh, like even early. Um, October early. October fourth, Adam for a breakpoint. October fourth. All right, you better, see, you better there you finish go. that game. Uh, October. Before Call of Duty. No, November eighth for Death Stranding. Oh damn! So it's two weeks, you know. Yeah, 2020 yeah. for Pokemon Sleep. Yeah, nobody gets. <laughs> now that. we'll I mean, talk about the, Pokemon Sleep in a bit. Uh, by the, the way, the only the only thing that I, I got to look up, but, but I don't think we've heard what are the uh, first person shooters coming out in that window? Because usually it's just Battlefield and, and Black Ops. Call of Duty yeah, and, Call, yeah, and Black Battlefield and, and Call of Duty, and they, I don't think there is another Battlefield coming. And unless there's another uh, wait, Halo, I don't know if that's coming. No, I think we're gonna get right? years this year. Yeah, but Gears is okay. Gears is still that third person type of shooter. That's its own thing. It's not first person military shooter like this. You know, uh, so I think Call it really comes down to the, it comes down to right now from what I've seen, the gameplay and then from what I've learned from how the the story and progression and just the the style of the game. Their their only real competition is going to be Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six Siege. Now, if they announce if Ubisoft had E3 announced that they got a sequel coming, you know it's going to come in that window. They're not going to say coming 2020. They're, they're going to drop it within this year because it's been, what, like two years already, and they've been f- promoting it. They have multiple seasons and stuff. I could easily say, hey, see them. Here we go. Here's another Rainbow Six. And then there we go. Now we're off to the races. That's the new competition. But if not, it's going to be all uh, Call of Duty to win when it comes to first-person shooters for this uh, upcoming season. But yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. And all these people that we heard before, oh, there was no campaign. I passed on it. Well, let's see if you speak with your wallet, because if that's the case, then this should do gangbusters. Yeah, I want to read this comment. This is interesting from um from Glorious War. He goes, cross play equals less overall spent in the gaming industry. I don't understand that logic there. So if there's cross play no, people. Well, he, well, he's saying he's saying essentially where it's like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what what what, it, what he's trying to say there because I mean, it's like people who are on Xbox are gonna who, who like that game are still gonna go and buy an Xbox. Yeah. Same thing with the PlayStation Four and PC. Yeah, the the whole idea is just to keep a community together and and to keep the game playing playable just so people to keep playing it they have to keep these servers on and if let's say not so many people are playing it on xbox but everybody on ps4 is playing it in pc well if you merge these communities together there you go then when you log into that game you don't have to worry about not finding somebody to play with you know there's plenty of heads now you know uh, what was it uh australia is having this issue with the division two there for some reason i guess the servers that they connect to are they're within Australia and not so much outside of that area. So they're having the, to play with the same people and they're having a limited uh, amount of people to play with. 
when it comes to matchmaking. So now they're trying to pair them up with other parts of the UK, but there is a lag issue because of that. So they, they, it's a back and forth, and they're still trying to work it out. They mentioned this in the past. And, and they can't hook them up with Japan because Japan yeah, don't well, give a shit. And it's the language barrier. They tried it, but then you got the language barrier. And so when you start getting in a group and everyone's speaking a different language, and I was like, ah, all right. So then that doesn't really work out, you know, especially when you're trying to you know, strategize and stuff. It's preferable that you have everyone speaking the same language. So that's a serious issue that they're dealing with when it comes to all that. And maybe some situation like crossplay would help because then it's like, Hey, you, all you guys in PS4 having issues matchmaking. Well, now you can talk with the PC guys and the Xbox guys all in Australia. Yeah, that's interesting, man. So, all right, cool, man. Um, any last thoughts on the call of duties? All right. Uh, we'll move on. We still got a couple of things. It looks here. good. Yeah, look, it looks good. Yeah, I, 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 I like know. game of the yeah. generation. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. I saw the trailer. I liked it. It looked, looked cool. Um. It, it's kind of interesting that they're not going to do the Michael Bay shit. So you know, we'll see what happens. Well, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's what I was thinking. I was like, maybe they'll they'll set that up later on. You know, in some other motions. But yeah, from what I've seen and now these drive it. No. Yeah. I I'm gonna predict something. Oh. This game's gonna outsell the last game. Well, yeah, that's not saying much, is it? <laughs> it is. It, no, it no, is no. Because... This is a big deal. No, that is a big deal. Because remember, we were talking about that. A lot of people still bought the other one, but they kept saying, "Oh, I, I'm not buying it because there's no campaign." Campaign. Campaign. Yeah, this. So yeah, my whole thing is this game will prove how, and I and I have trust that they're gonna they're gonna provide a good campaign, that a good campaign on a Call of Duty game will sell. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. I got you. Yeah, yeah, and the fact that they went out to go get these guys that did Uncharted and The Last of Us to put this story together proves that they really want to focus on it. It's not just like a, an attachment. It's like, oh, here's a little rail shooter just going shoot, 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 done. No, they they want you to remember this story. They want you to play this story and to feel something. So interesting, cool man. Thanks, dude. Uh, when you for, play no, Call that, of that Duty, a, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. When you play Call of Duty, yeah. you will feel something. Yeah. By the way, Adam, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm gonna have you run this next uh, story too, um, because you were telling us about it before the show. Um, Phil Spencer says that at Xbox E3, you know, their big showcase at E3, they're gonna have 14 studios and not just like, you know, third parties like their own Microsoft studio. So. What's up with that? That is so crazy. Yeah, he sent that tweet out because he said he's doing rehearsals. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's getting ready. And he's like, oh, we got these 14 shooters. And, man, the Excuse retweets me? and the follow. Ex- Yo, there was a lot of that. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. And he's uh-huh, like, you'll uh-huh, find uh-huh, out. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, so he said you'll find out more at the event. They have a lot to talk about. Well, what is ha- so, Havoc Physics going to show up, man? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. No. But, this just like so then uh, you got everyone scrambling everyone's trying to figure out what studios were for sale that we don't know about are these new in-house studios people going on linkedin to see job postings you know there's got to be something how do you just get all these extra Yo, studios man, they, and no they, one know you the silly manny's tactics man yeah right see, there you go yeah <laughs> and looking up remember when you looked up that guy and you found he got that new job oh yeah you gotta go on that you gotta go on LinkedIn. yeah well, that's what people are doing. They're trying to figure out because once he dropped that today, people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's so this definitely guarantees one other thing is that we're going to see new games announced and that they're coming soon. They have to be. There, there has gotta to be. Have I, some. I, they got to have some. Yeah, they know. Exactly. There's no way. There's no way. You announced you got 14 studios and we're like, yeah, don't worry. The first game I mean, coming 2020. Let's you know, go. So, but I mean, no. here's the thing. Yo, 14 <laughs> studios, 14 <laughs> games, <laughs> launch date. Let's go. Here's the thing, though. I mean, when somebody says we have 14 studios, that doesn't exactly mean that they're they bought them. That could just mean that we have 14 studios developing games specifically for us. Uh, the way he worded yeah, it, the way he it worded made it, it seem like it was his. Like well, they I got mean, it. like they're Microsoft. He didn't say we're working with 14 studios for exclusive titles. He's yeah, like, we have 14 I, I don't know. studios. Yeah, I, and, there's always there's always that funky right, word right. word tag. Was always that sort of funky word tag that happens with um, with marketing people. And, well, and let's uh, let's let me he, you know break it down and uh, we'll see. Okay, because Manny's right. There, there's always the way they phrase things is very important. Mm-hmm. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I read his tweet. Uh, just finishing our final E3 rehearsals here with the team in Redmond. Feel really good about the briefing. Lots to show. We have 14 Xbox Game Studios 
Uh, uh, let me read that again. Okay. We have 14 Xbox Game Studios games in the show this year. More first party games than we've ever had in the show. Fun time. So Okay, 14 Xbox Game Studios games. Yes. Yes. Mm, th- here's the thing. Th- uh, Sunset Overdrive was con- was was under Xbox Game Studio. Yes, it was. So that doesn't mean that those are companies that they own. That means that they're companies that are being pu- the company. Uh, they're, they're, these are games that are being published by Xbox, which makes them exclusive. Obviously, yeah, they're exclusive, because. But yeah. the other one was they called them Microsoft Studio. Remember, they had Microsoft Studio, and then Xbox Game Studios. It's as if he owns. They own a bunch of studios that are exclusive to the brand of Xbox. No, like I said, Sun- Sunset Overdrive was also under Xbox Game Studio, wasn't it? Microsoft Studio. Oh, is yeah, Microsoft? Microsoft. Yeah. different. There is no Microsoft. Xbox Game Studio. Microsoft Game that's what, Studio. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So this is different for him to say this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Xbox. Yeah. Let me uh, again. Let me read that again. Uh, Xbox Game Studios, not Xbox, not Microsoft Studios. Xbox Game Studios. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm. Yeah, so that's why a lot of people are trying to figure this out. I'm like, what the hell's going on? The only thing, I mean, if there are a bunch of studios that they picked up, I'm sure they're probably smaller studios, yeah. maybe doing indie titles, and there's plenty yeah, of them. I mean, that's like, a- you, you, I mean, like, here's the thing, like, uh, you know, even though Cuphead is officially, you know, was, you know, funded by, well, I mean, here, let's, let, there is Xbox Game Studio, so let's see what this means. Um. Okay, I just went on the website, there's Google search for Xbox Game Studios. The first mm-hmm. link is like the literal saying "Welcome to Xbox Game Studios," and it outlines the studios there. Yeah, these I include Three Four Three, Ninja Theory, Obsidian, Playground mm-hmm. Games, Rare. Because Rare. Mm-hmm. So it seems yeah. like it's like first party. It's yeah. the first party. It's, okay. it's all for party studios. Yep. So he, they could take have Grain, thirteen games. exclusives on the platform. Because Microsoft Studios is one of their first party studios, and then that new one. What's the new one that they did? Another. In-house one that they developed. Ah, oh, they gave what, it some uh, new name. What coalition? No, 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 no. There's another one he announced. Black Tusk. It. Nope, nope. There was another one. I forgot. Oh, the the the, the re- 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 revive. Undead Labs. Nope, no, nope. the Impulsion the re- Games. The re- it was a stupid <laughs> name, right? Yeah, it was a stupid name. It was a stupid name. It's for another in-house. Studio. The... It wasn't one of the studios that <laughs> they picked keep up. Keep naming, bro. You're gonna get it right eventually. <laughs> it was that in. The new in-house studio, right? Yeah, the yeah, announced, but, yeah. But it wasn't bought. It was, it was no, just a new studio. No, they just one that they developed. They said they got a bunch yeah. of talented guys from other studios, and they just built a new one. And he gave it some name. And he's like, yeah, they're just building up the groundwork. They just got together. Is Come on, someone in yeah, uh, 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 Glorious Word says that these games aren't going to be new. Some of them are not going to be new. But they're going to be exclusive, though. It, yeah, it, it, started, it started with an R, and it was a really dumb name. What the fuck was it called? Yeah. Yeah. No. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh, man. So so, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, I mean, they're they're another one. They're they're another one. I mean, this whole event, we always talked about it. There's no Sony there and there's really no Nintendo there. So it's it's all about Microsoft. You know, the spotlight's on them to deliver. Oh, I got it. It's not, it doesn't start with an R. <laughs> it's called the Initiative. Initiative. There you go. Yeah. It's still a dumb name, though. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah. Nah, man, it's the illest name ever, man. Xbox for life, son. <laughs> you know. Oh, shit. That rare shit. That show's good. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they dropped a lot of news between that and then I'm sure you'll have it on there. I need to see everything, but the next part for PC, what's coming, so. I don't even have that shit. The next thing is oh, Pokemon. Wait. The next thing I got oh, under the deck is Pokemon. The game Pass coming to yeah, PC. T- tell us everything about Xbox, man. What, what's there there you go. Here? Xbox uh, Game Pass is coming to PC, and it's called Xbox Game Pass. Yo, but hold it- on a second, Adam. Yo, I got so hyped up over the you know the shit we're talking about. That was actually the shit we were supposed to talk about before this. Um, so I'm switching <laughs> it around. Go ahead, yeah, bro. Right. Tell us about Game yeah. Pass. Tell us about Game Pass. <laughs> yo, yo this is why I love game... having a panel. I don't have to do nothing. It's like, yo, you there do you this, go. you do that. They're, and they're, I just chill in the cut. They're bringing you know? Game Pass, but it's not the same Game Pass that you have. It's called Excuse the me? same. It's the same yeah. branding. It's the same name and everything, but it's not. So it's not like, oh, I have Game Pass. Let me just sign in. So it looks like you're going to need a separate account, but they're going to, and it'll probably have oh. a different set of games. Yeah, it'll probably have a different <laughs> set of bullshit. games. It'll have a different set of games, but Fuck it'll, Xbox, be in a, man. it'll be in the PC world. Okay, yeah, yeah I, that's world. what I want to ask you. Because it seemed to me, again, Manny, that phrasing, right? Yeah. These are PC games, right? 
Like they aren't just yeah. all Xbox. These are PC games that, like, because remember, people don't understand. There's some games that Xbox makes or Microsoft makes that yeah. don't even come to Xbox. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they said it. They said that this. There's going to be a lot of games that you'll see from Steam that'll be part of this. Yeah. That are not on console. They just never been ported over. They just PC games. Also, yeah. they, also, they said another crazy thing about this thing is that you'll also see um, some of those those games on the Steam Store. Well, that's it. That's what they were saying. Is the games that you would usually see on Steam Store and, and not on consoles, you'll see in this Xbox Game Pass. So don't think that this is all. Oh, this is just the stuff that goes to consoles. Uh uh-uh. uh. This will be stuff that's on PC too. So it's going to be, that's why it's separate. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, there you go. So you'll need a separate account though. So it's not like the same. And I'm sure they'll announce some like discount plan. You know, if you have the Xbox one and then if you want the PC one, maybe they'll knock off like five bucks a month or something just to get you to, to sign up. But there's so many of these services, man, between this and the Ubisoft and the EA and everybody else getting their own damn service. It's all divided up. This is, it, it could be good. It's great if you're trying to save money and you're not big on buying shit, but. Yeah, by the way, this is the part I want to read because, uh, again, that phrasing is, is very important, man. Subscription service will offer a, and here, here's a quote, a curated library of over 100 high-quality PC games on Xbox, on Windows 10. They didn't say Xbox games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did say that some of their exclusives that you're they're used to seeing will be there. So they keep counting um, the Master Chief collection. Yeah, 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 the Master Chief and stuff like that. You know, I'm sure we'll see maybe see at the some of those, but yeah, it, it, I I think they also mentioned that they were going to keep with the trend that if an Xbox exclusive comes out, it's how it's also released on Game Pass that yes. it'll also be released on this. Well, that's what's happening with Gears of War Five, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, and that's good. I mean, they'll probably sell more copies that way too. If people that don't have the console and just do everything through the PC. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, Adam, yeah, that, yeah. Here's a question for you. Um, Gears of War 5 on Steam, how does Adam feel about that? Xbox is dead. Long live Xbox. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. Uh, I love the franchise, and I'll play it anywhere. You know, If I could play it on, on Steam, and whatever, because it won't be the first Gears game that they had on PC. The first one actually had. That's right. was on PC, and it had two additional missions. And we got those two missions on console many, many years later in that Ultimate Edition for Gears 1. And that had those two missions that were just PC exclusive. So, it, you know, it, it's one of those. And I'm not so much of just the whole Xbox and PlayStation. I go where the games are and where I want to play them. You know, so I'm okay with it. You know, like right now, I've been playing freaking AC3 Remastered on the Switch. You know, it's like I got no chivos or trophies for, but I'm doing it. You know what I mean? That's just where I prefer to play it. Does it look as good as the other ones? Nope. You know, but it's still fun to play it on the go. You know, so I mean, hey, more power to it if it's on Steam. And there you go again with that cross play that that works out. Then I'll be able to play with everybody that's on the Xbox and they'll just see my little logo sing on PC because they had that for the 360. Mm-hmm. There was a few games before there was Shadow Run, which was a horrible name for that because that was not like the original Shadow Run that we know, but it was called Shadow Run. And whenever I would play people and, and I was on Xbox, it would say their status as PC. So yeah, then I would. Yeah, it was crossplay. So I'm sure they'll bring that back and we'll see a lot of that. You know, and as long as and we could wait, can we talk? I don't know if we could chat with them at that time. I don't think the chat function was there. But whatever. I, it's cool with it, you know. As long as it's not in the Epic Store. Fuck Epic Store. So <laughs> it, it would be funny if Gears of War was on Epic Store because, you know, Epic made Gears of War back yeah, in the yeah, day. But it's not like they but, owned it anymore. Yeah, not yeah, anymore. No, they, 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 they sold. It was Foolish. a whole big thing. Foolish. Well, the, the whole, well, even that, Epic, <laughs> the, the Epic Games, the whole thing left because Cliffy was part of that studio. Then they sold to that Chinese company. And then Microsoft went and started buying up, well, bought up Gears from that Chinese company that now owns Epic Games. So it's cool. not even original owners of Epic Games anymore. Yeah, it's not. It, it just would be funny, you know. I just want to yeah. see the world burn, you know. If those things were a fucking <laughs> epic store, dude, you know, that'd be hilarious. All right, let's move on. Um, this one is weirdest fucking announcement of the week. Pokemon Sleep. I still like. I know what it is. I can't wrap my head around it. Chris, dude, what dude. the fuck? Don't you get a? Don't you have to buy a peripheral or something yeah. and sleep with it? That's you creepy. Have to yeah. Buy- 
Yeah, um, break it down. What, what is this? Because when I saw it, I'm like, I'm like, okay, it's like, hey, yeah, it's like, hey, it's like it, the, all the fun of Pokemon while you sleep. I'm like, how? What? Uh, uh, it, yeah, <laughs> break it down, man. What the fuck is this? I don't know. It's um, <laughs> they've they've gotten far into the quality of life stuff so much so that I think somebody snorted some coke and was like, yeah, you know what, guys, fuck walking, man. How about they sleep and complain this shit? You know, I, because I watched it. I watched um, we were I was streaming the press conference while I was on the plane, and um, and Kristen was watching it too, and we're just like looking at just like. Really sleep? Uh, like this is what you're gonna do? You have to buy another like fifty, sixty dollar peripheral to hook into this game, put it on your bed so you can like what level up your Pokemon and shit. I, I you don't have to I plug know. it in, right? It's not gonna catch fire or anything. No, I mean it's got a battery in it, you know, but it's it's just another peripheral. Like you had to buy a peripheral already for the game. Well you didn't have to, but they sold one. And now there's another one that you have to buy just for the sleep part. So I I I, I just don't know what they're thinking. This is this is the quality of life stuff that I remember um, Iwata was pushing when he was president. Like yeah. he wanted this kind of stuff. So this is, it, but they're doing it. But it's so weird. Like I expected if you're going to hold a press conference, I thought there was going to be some major news, either an update about the main game, or they're going to do a side game, or maybe they're going to do like, um, like you know how um, Manny talked about how the, they're going to put like. Nintendo Land in, in Universal, I thought maybe they were going to, like, hey, we're going to have all this Pokemon yeah, like, stuff in the parks or some yeah. shit. No, this press conference was about a, a, a sleep peripheral for Pokemon Go. I'm like, this is ridiculous. And they ended it with shirts. Like, that didn't even <laughs> top it off. Ended it with, like, oh, we have clothes, too, forOkemon. I'm like, motherfuck, people have been making Pokemon marketing for years. Yeah. So, yeah, that's like all Nintendo. it is. It's like, it's like, hey, we got shirts. But you already have shirts. <laughs> yeah. So it, it it was crazy to me. Like it just kept getting weirder as the conference went on. They they start they, that was the top they were like, Oh, Niantic's doing all this stuff and we got this peripheral and you and literally all it is is you 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 put it in your bed when you go to sleep and I guess it's gonna give you items and you'll catch Pokemon while you I guess it measures like your how well you sleep and how well you sleep is how well you'll do in the game. What if you have insomnia? Or like... Well, then you're screwed. Then, 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 <laughs> it'll, then, it'll, then it'll link up with Alexa and it'll order you some pills from Amazon. <laughs> and it's like, we noticed you had trouble sleeping. We ordered some pills for you. Yeah. By the way, shout out, shout out to Chris, man. What? And I'll tell you why. I bought, I bought melatonin. Those natural oh. shits. Man, those shits... Man, I take those. I take those shits every fucking night. I sleep like a baby every night. Oh, there you go. Oh yeah, that's right. Because when you came back from Korea, you said you had jet lag, sleep. insomnia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good, good, man. Yeah, it it definitely helps. It helps your rhythms, your circadian rhythms get back. You know, melatonin would be a lot more useful than this peripheral. Are you <laughs> <laughs> bringing it? Yes, back, guess dude. what? Pokemon sleep comes with melatonin. It sprays right? melatonin <laughs> in your face while you sleep. Keep you asleep. Man. They live. <laughs> I just, I couldn't believe like that was a press conference. And that was the top, that was like the big thing. They were so proud of that. And then they ended it with like, oh, yeah, we have a line of shirts. And, and, and of course, and not surprising, the Nintendo fanboys were loving it. Like, what wow. is wrong with you, dudes? I man? just, I don't get it. Those they were so. Yeah. Those people are probably the same people that think that Nintendo owns um, Pokemon. Pokemon, yeah, that's right. No, it's so <laughs> stupid. Like, this is why they give you this shit. You eat it up. Like, you'll eat up anything they give you. It's like, oh, you have a sleep peripheral. Great. You have to dish out more money into into a mobile game uh, to measure your sleep. Like, come on, man. Just go buy a Fitbit if you want to do <laughs> didn't, that shit. Didn't, didn't, the, didn't the PlayStation Vita also have that one, too? Have a sleep a sleep game? Did they? It was called Wake Up Club or something? Oh, Where, God. I know, think I vaguely remember that, yeah. And I, I think you could get a platinum in it, and I think Riku actually did get a platinum in it. Oh, man. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, yeah. Riku always getting <laughs> yeah. platinums, man. It's on a Vita. He, right. he probably has a platinum for it. But, like, the stuff, like, that you should get excited for if they were announcing games or if they were announcing like 
more uh, more brand deals. And they also talked about they're opening up a Pokemon Center in Singapore. I'm like, so why does the rest of the Earth care about this? Like, okay, good for Singapore. Now they have yeah, a store. What, what do I care? You know, exactly. Yeah. Or there's already one in New York, man. So the fuck does anyone else care? <laughs> oh, wait, what? Well, no, there isn't. It's it's a Nintendo store. <laughs> oh, it's a Nintendo store. Whatever. Oh, it's it's funny because for, year, but for years it was named the Pokemon Center, and there's still yeah. Pokemon stuff all over it. Like, the doors yeah. still have Pokeballs on it. Yeah, so, I mean, th- that didn't make any sense. They they this. I mean, I know it's a worldwide conference, and they have to announce everything, but it's like those are the three things they focus on. They have a Pokemon Center in Singapore, they have the sleep peripheral, and they make shirts. I mean, and that's it. That's literally all I got. Like, it's like I don't. Hey, I, let's go to Singapore. Go to the Poke Store. <laughs> yeah, it it makes no sense. Like, I was like, I was like, okay, they gotta announce something. They gotta be like, oh, we have this new game coming. Or we're gonna do this with the Switch. Or we're gonna have this connectivity. Or we're gonna have this park deal. Or we're gonna have... no, none of that. It was a complete letdown. I don't know what these fanboys are excited for. They literally gave you nothing. Yeah, Nintendo. Not surprising. You mean Pokemon Company? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, Glorious War says, "When I heard of Pokemon Sleep, I wanted to go October Revolution style at Pokemon Company HQ." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you crazy! All right. Um, and the last story. This one's for fun. Many. Uh, you could do this one. Um, Iron Hold Maiden. Up. Iron Maiden swing 3D realms over their Ion Maiden video game. <laughs> yes. So 3D realms. You know, it's actually. You know, it's funny because this game has been out for quite a while. Actually, Iron yeah. Maiden. And Iron Maiden's actually really cool. It's like a throwback to old like Doom games. Like yes. you know, like you know, um, you know, the kind of like pixelated sort of old school graphics and it's made by a bunch of people who made those sorts of games back in the day yeah, like Duke so really, and stuff like that yeah same sort of idea just just with this new character so yeah they chose they made this character ion maiden and now iron maiden's company is like no you made this character we're gonna sue you now uh you know funny thing is it's like you know usually iron maiden's kind of okay with that stuff but i also think that this this and if you look at you know some of the, the the language in there, they talk about one of the characters in the game is a rip off of somebody, and something else is a rip. Like some they, they rip supposedly say they ripped off Eddie and all kinds of other things from the Iron Maiden. And I'm like, guys, you know, you realize you just like if anybody didn't hear about this game, now people have heard of it, right? Yeah, that's right. They give them free promotion, pretty much. Yeah, they get, literally gave them free promotion. I know why their lawyers are doing this is because they have a fucking game out in the market, and they'll be like, "Oh, it's too confusing." I, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting it confused. Are you? Yeah. Although I will admit, when um, Ion Maiden, um, when it first came to my attention a few months ago, yeah. I was like. Mm, I think you're going to get in trouble. And they did, you know, because yeah. it was so close. I'm like, guys, you know what you're riffing on here. Come on now. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, it's like, what does Iron Maiden really have going on right now? Seriously. Other than that lousy game that they have on iPhone, right? And one, and they probably have like an album that's coming out. How are you going to get that confused? Seriously. You're going to go to a fucking music store and be like, Iron, and, and spell Iron wrong. Yes. And then all of a sudden get a game. Hey, to be fair though, when I was you know writing this story on Google um Hangouts or Google Docs, it kept wanting me to change ion to iron. <laughs> yeah, <because laughs> like ion's a ion's a real word. What the fuck? Yeah, that's a word. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's probably because it's a more commonly used word combination, and that's why I was putting them together for you. Yeah, actually, here's where it got funny. When I wrote ion, no problem. When I wrote maiden after that, then it's I like, changed that fucking iron. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. It, it's it's a weird sort of thing because it's like you know I don't like I, I feel like it's kind of a dumb a dumb reason to go out. But you know you got to one thing you got to know about these lawyer companies. You know, like these people that handle like things like this, they just look at shit autonomously without the actual, you know, approval of the, you know, the, of the rights holder to just, they just start shooting at people. You know what I mean? It happened to me, you know, with a, with Epic Games where they, you know, they sent me a cease and desist letter, you know, but they were going to take me to court, but these, that was the threat because yeah. of, because of you know, because of the thing that I was making in my spare time for Adam, you know, the, the gift that I made for him. So I mean, I just feel like it's a situation that if if they probably got 
to be honest, the best, the real cool way to really to, to really you know clear this out is if somehow they were able to work together on something. Because to be honest, I think it's a I think it's a cool that game is such a fun cool idea, you know, for especially for nowadays, kind of giving that old school sort of you know well, challenge, you know, none of this big old you know dopey you know these kind of like it's more about the gameplay and just telling a fun fun video game story rather than you know getting too deep and i feel like it's a like a thing that's kind of missing from all, some games these days where we're kind of too it seems like you know again and we're talking about this on the same show that we mentioned a, a, a kojima game where we have there's a lot of games that are a little bit too far up their own ass <laughs> oh man by the way full disclosure manny and i are going to go see iron maiden live in july Oh yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna wear my Iron Maiden shirt. Yes. <laughs> will, will we get booted out? You know. <laughs> Th- those shirts well, are well, infringing Bruce on Dickens our Dickens franchise. On the stage, he's gonna like. I heard about this game called Iron Maiden, and we, <laughs> as the band, do not approve of them. <laughs> you know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Um. Yes, that's gonna do it for us, man. So yeah. Wait, uh, you forgot yeah, so, about the big news. What's up? We just did the biggest yeah, there news was of the more. night. We got Ghostbusters remastered. Oh, coming. that man! <laughs> Fuck out of here, yeah, man. Oh, shit. Oh, go ahead, Adam. We'll, we'll tell us. That about game it. was awesome. <laughs> go ahead. So what's All going right. on? So what, it's coming out. Why, okay, here's my this question. Is, here's my question. Why? <laughs> why? why? All right. It's an because, anniversary, dude. Well, it's an anniversary, and that was the only good game that we ever received. That was the one that Dan Aykroyd <laughs> actually worked on the script. That has all the voice work. Sam, uh, Sam, oh, Sam, what's his last name? Oh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Harold Ramis. Oh, Harold, Harold Ramis. There you go. Harold Ramis. I don't know. What's he? Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and of course Ernie Hudson. They're all there. Game. They all came in they all did their voice work you know and this is the only time we're ever going to get all four of them together doing their roles re- doing their roles as ghostbusters and the story was great it was a fun game and i had a feeling something was going to happen because it's a bc game on xbox right it's backward compatible and they usually put it on sale for like five bucks and for the longest time it was not on sale yeah. i'm like wow that's weird why and then they weren't really advertising even when halloween came out usually they put them they didn't do anything with it yeah. and i'm like oh shit they're gonna pull it that's the first thing that came to mind they're gonna get rid of it if something's happening and then poof this comes out and the story behind it's even crazier apparently this the old studio that that developed the game they had some of the i don't know the, another studio had some of their materials and found a hard drive in a box and when they plugged in a hard drive it had all the original videos in hd so then that's why they use that to do the upgrade to 4k because of that they did not have the actual video for it all these cutscenes yeah, and all stuff. the c uh, all the cg cinematic. all the cg they didn't have any of it and they found it all on this hard drive and once they found it like all right we're going to do this and uh saber interactive is working on it the guys who did a uh, World War Z, so should be good. And there's no release date, but they said it's definitely coming within 2019. So I picture either summer or I doubt if they w- want to put it in that crowded market of October, November. You know, the fall. What we talked about. Yeah, that'd be suicide. Yeah. Well, so yeah. hopefully we'll get the, and I'm sure we'll probably get the date during E3 since this info already dropped, and it's coming to Xbox, PS4, and Switch, and PC. So. And PC, yeah, yeah. They they're said probably, everything. to be honest, I'm sure they're probably using the PC version of it to create all the other editions of it, and they're probably not using the Xbox, meant the, not the Xbox, the um, old um, PS3 version of it. Yeah, yeah, no, and I think that yeah, absolutely, that's probably why they did this because they found all the the high res videos on that hard drive because they didn't want to deal with the compressed ones from the consoles because everything that we have at the for the time PS3 and Xbox, it's all compressed, mm-hmm. you know, so. And there's if, a lot. There's a lot of video, like a lot of even videos that are that look like they're they're um, in game stuff. A lot of those are also videos too, because they used to use them to hide load times. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. That was a fun game. The one thing that pissed me off with it is that it did have multiplayer and four player, but it wasn't for the campaign. It was just like specific missions. They should they should activate that thing. Yes, you and have it, four people they, playing as the Ghostbusters. Yeah, well, yeah, you could do that. But, yeah, for the whole campaign, that would be awesome. And hopefully we'll find out. I mean, they said there's more info they're going to announce. And we've seen that with certain things, like with the remasters, especially with this uh, AC remaster that I'm playing now, AC3. They incorporated the the new map, the new HUD that was from uh, 
the newer versions and they put that into it so they can make changes they can also they can easily do that so hopefully we'll see but uh yeah i was excited for that i'm excited you know play that on the go you know be a ghostbuster yeah there I wonder you go. Who's, yeah. The, who's the company releasing it mm. what was that it was released through atari original oh yeah no it's a it well it's a legal vision now man <laughs> I, I think it was. It's still Sony that it's uh, Sony. Activision had it before, and now I think it's Sony because remember Sony did the movies. They have the rights. Well, well so I think, but then no, it's being released. Sony, in I don't know. Sony releasing. The I do. I just know there's two studios working on it, and I saw the, the Saber Interactive because that was still fresh in my mind. See, so maybe they're also releasing it. I don't know, but hmm. it's coming. I mean, yeah, they had a trailer for it and everything. So. Hey, what if you're the, if you were disappointed with the last Ghostbusters movie, <laughs> there you go, play this game. Yeah, exactly, play this game. And, and the, Dan Aykroyd kept saying that this, if he was to make a movie, it would have been this script. Yeah, that's oh. what I heard. This was a f- unofficially Ghostbusters three. Yeah, he was like, "This is it. It's the Ghostbusters." All right, man. Um, anything yeah, else you guys want to jump in? You know, jump in with anything? Oh, and the other big yeah. no, I'm just damn Adam yeah. shit, no, man. That, tonight, that's man. No, that's, it was a lot, a lot. A <laughs> this lot was a big out. week. This was a big this week, was, man. Shit, not even that. This was a big day. Yeah, <laughs> Think about right. it. All this shit. Oh yeah, today. my bad. Yo, I forgot. Happy birthday, Adam. Thank you. Yeah, Thank man. You. That's it. You're only 62 once. <laughs> you know, so I was or excited, or though. until until Sunday when you're 62 <laughs> again. <laughs> you know. All right, man, we're going to wrap this bitch up, man. So thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe to Throwdown on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Follow us on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook at Throwdown Show. Links are located in the description below. Once again, our show is Tony Polanco. and is joined by Emilio Lopez. Uh, yeah, I'll see you later, guys. And uh, I don't know how much faith I have in the company that made the remake, the remake of Shaq Fu and NBA Playgrounds. <laughs> What do you mean? But they recently remember I told you they did the speed. World, yeah, I don't but know. Fuck out of World War Z. Z. Fuck out of here. World War Z and I don't that killed know. it. You can't. You can't do this that. Is, this is joke. Mad Dog Interactor. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Just saying. All right, man. Chris Seely. Hey, take care, everyone. Carlos Romero. Hopefully, the weather in New York is good. Man, it's been raining too fucking much. Man, it's raining all raining over. Raining over. Like it's, you live in Florida. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Brett Murdoch. It's been real. Adam Vale. All right. Have a good weekend, people. And Brian Monjoma. Apparently, people are complaining that a film with a giant lizard, a moth, and a snake has too many fighting between a giant lizard, a moth, and a snake. Man. By the way, Godzilla King of the Monsters was fucking amazing. Go see it. It is incredible. Don't listen to those dumbass critics talking all that bullshit. Oh, there weren't enough Tony? humans. What happened? Cry? Because I was watching. Um, I was reading Dana's tweets, and she was saying that you. Uh, oh, yeah. that you Dana exaggerated. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, yeah man, Dana exaggerated. I didn't cry, but son, I, but I'll keep it real, right here, man. When that Mothra theme came up, I almost fucked up. But I, but, you, but Tony doesn't do that and shit. You know, you don't want to look soft. You know, it hits you in the heart. But, but no, it hit right here on the inside. I was crying though. I'll keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. fuck me, damn. Yo, right? oh, Brian, it's gonna fuck. Oh, oh, when it hits the lips, it's so good. You know, is it Resident End Game? I'm gonna <clears throat> Brian. Man. Oh, it's good. Wait, wait, it's good, man. <laughs> yeah, whoa, whoa, that's a controversial statement right there. Yo, mm, man, Tony's totally not giving an answer. Oh, that's oh, oh, that's wait, what, so what's going on? No, I do have an answer. I just don't want to say because motherfucker's gonna cut my throat. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a megaton right there. Better than the Last Jedi. Well, oh, come on, son. A lot of stuff the the shit awesome. I took last night was better than the last shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn. Anyway, man, we'll see y'all on Sunday, man. Peace out. Peace. Later, guys. Later. This is.